So this is the editing PC that we have upgraded quite a few times in the last 12 months and it's time to upgrade it again. I'm not sure if you saw my update after three months but some of the things that were wrong with this PC and now this is going to be hopefully the final upgrade that's going to fix everything to make this into the perfect creator PC. So let's take a look what we're going to upgrade then. Amazon Music Unlimited. I'll give you the best news from the get-go. If you sign up for the Amazon Amazon Music free trial through the links in the description below, you don't just get one month free trial, not two, not three, but four month free trial of Amazon Music. This is limited time only, so act fast through the links in the description below. So Amazon Music has over 100 million songs and podcasts, so whatever you're looking for, they've got it. Listen anywhere, offline and online, ad free. Now you can also use your Alexa devices to voice command and ask Alexa to play any song or podcast you want. We find it especially convenient when cooking in the kitchen. So sign up for the free trial right now through the links below and get four months for free. Limited time only, so act fast. So one of the first things we're gonna actually change is the case, which is not particularly necessary, but actually are gonna give us some upgrades. We're gonna have to tear all of this PC apart and then pull everything out. Okay, that's uh, quite dusty as you can see. So we're gonna have to clean that as well. The motherboard, SSDs, RAM, and all of this is now finally out. Very good condition, I'd say. I'm gonna put this on the side because we have to clean the thermal paste later. So this is the Antex Performance One FD, full tower performance one. And it's got a few things that makes this tower special. Number one, it's very good airflow. Number two, it's got special front fans that are 30 millimeters thick and are 140 millimeters, you know, wide or big. And as far as I know, this is one of the only cases or the only fans that have thicker 140 millimeter fans, which means that possibly these are one of the best 140 millimeter fans to create airflow through our radiator. So my idea is to fit the 420 millimeter Arctic liquid freezer here in the front with these 340 millimeter fans pushing through and then I'll attach some in the back as well. We'll see how many fans we can get in the back as well to get push and pull configuration and they get really good airflow through the case which means that even more performance and it's even more quieter. Secondly, it's got a cool LCD panel in the top that you know shows you CPU and GPU um, temperature and it looks really cool as well. So this part actually comes off with magnets and you've got this mesh in here. So it's not as good of a filter as we had on the Be Quiet case, but we should be able to get better airflow. And I think this comes off as well. So as you can see, here's the panel that will show you GPU and CPU temperature, which can be pretty useful. You've got a dust filter underneath all the way through as well. And then there's really nice panels in the back for cable management that makes it easy to, um, you know, have a cable manage or not cable manage, which I like in this case because if you want something that's very easily accessible and um, changeable, like you want to quickly manage or you know perform maintenance on your system, you need to change something. You don't want everything to be tied down with the zip ties and then cutting them all off, which I like about this case. So there we go. All the panels are like heavy and very high quality which makes this case very, very heavy. There is one 3.5 inch hard drive cage there as well that has another 2.5 inch hard drive uh, or SSD on the top as well, but we are not going to be using this. So I'm just gonna be taking this off. Okay, so you can put another 2.5 inch on the bottom, then one 3.5 inch in here, another 2.5 inch there. In terms of other hard drives, you can have another three 3.5 inch SSDs in there. So five 3.5 SSDs all together. One of the first things we're gonna do is take these fans off. 
because they need to be on the front of the case. Okay, I like that these three fans come with quite long cables. So if you do want to use them separately or something like that, you can do that. Interesting, just realized that these Arctic P14 PWM PSD fans are actually 27 millimeters thick. Be quiet are 25. So I didn't know that, that they are 27 already. That's pretty cool. So another thing we can do is take this top bracket completely off. One of these issues that I have is fans here, the 30 millimeter fans, thick fans. They're not designed to be built on radiator because they don't give you special screws for them. If you take normal fan screws for these, as you can see, if I put the screw through, it doesn't even show the end. So there's nowhere it can attach on the radiator. That's why we're gonna have to use a bit thicker screws. These are thick enough to go through here. Let's clean the thermal paste and then hoover the radiator. So the radiator is now installed like that and it's pretty much the same configuration that we have two fans in the top are like pulling it through and then we have three fans in the front unfortunately i can't fit another one down there so that's what we're gonna have to work with now this back fan is also 30 millimeters th thick so that's quite interesting and as you can see the blades are slightly different as well they're a bit more aggressive fan blades as you can see but my plan is to actually have a little bit of like the kind of design going on as well because i really like the way these be quiet light wings look with a perfect circle around that's just lit up just kind of like a little bit of a tasteful rgb so but i'm gonna still try to use this fan um in a place because you can mount fans on the bottom here as well on this bit the power supply shroud which might actually be good for us you'll see in a moment but the other thing is, again, I don't have these long screws that go through because you can't just mount them with um, like a normal fan screw. It has to be longer and I don't have it. So we'll see. Next off, let's put our motherboard in because that's gonna come next. I forgot how nice it is to work when there's nothing here and you just got empty space to put in, especially power supply cables or fans. Oh, this is, this is so, so nice. Always make sure you use the right screws for the motherboard because often the motherboard uh, or the cases have different screws for the motherboards. This one here is like with a smaller thread, but from the Be Quiet case, I had with a, a bit more thicker thread, like the power supplies are usually. And this is the same thread that you have on the, the 2.5 inch SSD, for example. So I'm not sure if you remember, but one of the biggest complaints I had about this PC is the USB-C port in the back, because there's only two ports, the Thunderbolt 4 port. They're not actually non-Thunderbolt USB-C compatible, because if I use like a 10 gigabit USB-C, enclosure or device in there then it's just gonna work at very very slow speeds so i was sad that i only had only one front panel usb-c port which you have in here as well but i have something to fix this this is the sonnet tech allegro pro 4 usb 3.2 gen 2 type c pcie card so essentially this little guy here this tiny skinny little pcie card is going to give us another three 10 gigabit USB-C ports and there are two separate controllers for these so these two ports are controlled by this one controller and then these two by these two as well which gives us very good performance now this doesn't have any heatsink or anything on it it apparently doesn't need it but when we plug it in down there as you can see we still have space on the bottom side to put a fan in there to actually blow some air onto this card to make sure that this keeps cool and uh, you know doesn't overheat 
So I've got these Be Quiet Lightwings 120mm fans as well. And the cool thing is that if you put this fan backwards, you actually still have a little nice cool um, like RGB that shines through here, which I'm thinking I'm going to put three fans on the bottom here and one on the back there as well, 120. And that's going to be like intake from the bottom out from there. And then I'll have three 140s on the front here as well that will be pushing outside. And then I'll have another circle in there. So there's a few fans that we need to mount. So let's get these mounted. Another good thing about this Anta case is that the front panel header is not like these tiny little knobs, but they're actually put it together just like that, which means it it's much easier to install. This took 10 times faster as what it usually would be. These little details, that's very important. I wish every case did that. Okay, before I'm gonna put the GPU and the USB-C card in, I'm gonna figure out the fan cables in the back and do uh, like the cable management in the back first. So previously I was using the Fantex Revolt X 1200 watt power supply. I'm gonna replace it to a very similar power supply, but there's one thing. This power supply is actually meant for two systems and I didn't wanna use this up for my personal build because if we're gonna do a build with that in the future, it's a very specific and very special power supply. Then the other option was to go with this Antec Signature um, series. This is a 1000 watt power supply, 80 plus platinum. It's got plenty of juice. It's got everything I need. In a way, it's a little bit of a downgrade in terms of the maximum power output, but I don't need more than 1000 watts, right? And this would be well enough to do that. And and this is what Antic sent with this one. But the only thing is that if I don't want to use the adapter on the, the GPU that comes with, you know, the one 12 volt high power to four 8 pin PCIe power adapters, then I'm going to have to buy the cable separately. Antic does sell the power uh, cable separately, but right now I just want to get this finished and I need to get it finished. And I forgot to check that with Antec before we did that because my editor is going to come back and he's going to have to use this PC to edit this video. So we're going to have to find something else that I have here available. I'm going to use this FSB 1200 watt power supply, which also has this 12 volt high power cable already included. This is going to save me a lot of cable clutter that I would have had with the Antic power supply because I would have had to use four cables instead of one cable like this one. So I need one of those and then one of the VGA cables. Okay, so here is the moment of truth. That's on, that's on, let's go. And we're gonna get a post. Boom, there we go. Windows it is. That means the PC is gonna go back to the main place and get it finally set up. So one of the main things that I was hoping to fix was the USB-C and the actual, you know, card reader issue. This is me turning the PC on right now again, and I've got two card readers plugged in here. One of them is this uh, PANS um, Media Center Media Hub, and then another one is the Kingston one. The Kingston one requires extra power, so there's an extra power cable plugged in the back, and the PANS one doesn't. So, and both of these are connected to one of the USB-C cables in the back of the Sonnet's, you know, USB-C expansion card. They're connected to the other port or the other switcher because it has a two dedicated chips on it and then that's kind of split in two. So that's how they're connected. I just want to show you how and what the issue is. I've got a few SD cards and SSDs here for, you know, one of the videos we did. So I'm just going to plug it in. All right, this time it worked. Let's take our footage, which I believe is this one. Yes. So we'll copy this one. And then on this side, we've got uh, some of it like our project drives. So this here is one of them. 
Okay, and let's paste it in there. And you can see the speed. Can you see it was 230 megabytes per second and then it dropped down. And look at this now. It's not a constant speed. So these cards can easily be read 250 megabytes per second. Let's see if the camera does focus. These are one of those cards that I'm using. These should be like 250 megabytes per second. And I can get that speed stably if I take this like little bit out from the hub and directly plug it in so now while it's copying this one as you can see it's dropping the speed so it's not a constant one i'm plugging this one into the other reader and first of all okay it took some time to read a bit laggy it's this clip here and we're gonna copy it here and let's take a look at the other one now as you can see the first one completely stopped this, these should be two separate dedicated parts and then look now it starts the other one and the first one or the second one now has stopped. Okay, and now they're finally both kind of been there. The first one goes down in speed. So as you can see, I'm not getting the fastest speeds. What happens if I just press X on this one? I'll just cancel the second one right now. I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to plug it into the front USB-C port. Okay, so it goes in the back here. It should read that SSD straight away as well. Okay, there we go. Front panel Type-C. We're going to do exactly the same thing. First of all, it feels much, much snappier than uh, previously. Oh, what's happened now? As you can see, what what is this lagging? What? Did you see the Explorer crash a bit? No, that's not that one. It's K then. Okay, here's our other clip. We're going to copy it this one through the front front panel part. And can you see how the front panel part is just constant speed there compared to the back panel parts okay so this is the front panel parts is exactly the same but somehow the back panel parts can you see how this has gone up and down 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 the front panel while it's doing that i'll just plug that one we'll get this one in there as well and now as you can see the back panel port doesn't even recognize this s this card in there i just plugged it in and there's, it's nothing the light is not on it's not quite working. This one now finished copying, but the front panel pod, as you can see, is still going 246 five megabytes per second. See, it's constant speed. Now, if I unplug this one, let's see if it recognizes this card or not. See, it doesn't recognize this at all. So sometimes what I have to do is I'll have to unplug this hub, plug it back in, you can hear it there. Now this works. Why is this? The funny thing is, if I have plugged this into the whole hub into the front panel part, then I don't get these same issues. And I did get similar things or similar issues when I had it plugged into the back of the motherboard, like to, to the Thunderbolt 4 port. And look at that. Now it's stopped. Why has it stopped? And look, it says, I don't know where it is. Where's the card? Try again. It can't find it. Okay. Because it's somehow lost connection. Even though it has dedicated power going to this one, it just absolutely puzzles me why this is. If I take this off and plug it like directly into one of the back parts there, still have to undo this again. And then here's our card. Now we get this red. I also want to show um, the the like Thunderbolt 4 ports and like what the issue for me is. So the front panel port works fine. And if I plug in this, which I record on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K onto these, you know, drives that I've, I've got plenty of these. And this is 10 gigabit USB-C port, right? And if I plugged it into just the back port now, so this is the card right now, the expansion card on the PCIe, you can see here we've got our file. If we copy it over, this should be around 800 megabytes per second. And because, you know, these should be 10 gigabit ports there as well, like the advertise, but we're getting about 547 megabytes per second. Now, let's see if this is going to be constant speed as well, or is it going to drop down? Drop down a bit to 500. Now back to 540, 550. Seems like it is keeping this 550 megabytes per second speed. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to put it in the front port. So this is the front panel USB-C port, right? I know this is faster. It supports up to 20 gigabits per second USB 3.2 X2 Gen 2 X2 slot, basically. But even though this port here is actually USB 3.1 10 gigabit port, 
So now when we see the speeds 850 megabytes per second, then that's what you should be getting really with this, you know, 10 gigabit pod type of uh, thing. So this is what always happened when I plug it into the front panel port. I get about 850 megabytes per second through this, which is pretty good, right? I'm going to stop it. And now I'm going to plug it into the back of the Thunderbolt ports on motherboard. So now this is the Thunderbolt port in the back of the motherboard. Let's see how this does. Look at that speed. This is Thunderbolt 4 port on the motherboard. And look at that. We're getting only 30, 40 megabytes per second. It's absolutely embarrassingly, embarrassingly bad. And that's why I was hoping to get the card and get the speeds of the card, which we, you can see, yeah, we're getting about 550 megabytes per second. Still, that's not the full 10 gigabit what they advertise on the card. Now, is this to do with my um, PC layout? Is it latency? Latency, I don't think so. Is there some kind of a PCIe switching going on? I checked the motherboard. That last slot has X4, PCIe Gen 4, X4 slot. So, you know, four lanes of PCIe. Even if that card, which I think is PCIe Gen 3, uh, we're still going to get plenty of pan bandwidth for 10 gigabits speed, what we'd need to get. So if I plugged it into the back of the motherboard, as you can see, this is just absolutely embarrassing. Yeah, I could get some kind of a Thunderbolt 4 uh, card reader or something like that, Thunderbolt that reads the cards, but I was hoping I would be able to kind of find the solution a little bit easier than spending a few hundred dollars because the the card, the expansion card, what I have over there for the USB-Cs is much cheaper than a Thunderbolt USB-C um, card reader or media center, something like this. So I'm going to stop this because that's embarrassingly slow and I don't have time to wait for that. And now you can see through the front panel part, exactly the same cable, same file, same drive, 860 megabytes per second, roughly around there. So I still haven't figured out exactly the answer. Maybe the answer is a Thunderbolt hub with um, card readers in there or Thunderbolt 4 card reader. I don't know. If you have any uh, advice for me how to fix that, but that is my issue with uh, this motherboard particularly. It's like that one thing that can it be Thunderbolt 4 and like USB 4 at the same time so we can get all of the speeds, but it's only like Thunderbolt 4, not USB compatible. <sighs> Other than that, I'm absolutely loving the look of this PC, especially how these fans underneath there look. In fact, this case is actually smaller than the Be Quiet case on the desk. It takes less space and houses exactly the same, uh, you know, stuff. I guess we'll have to upgrade again. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. But if you're a crate and you want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC and don't want to spend money on parts that, you know, don't actually give you any performance, then check out the build guides in the description below. There's a few for you over there. Whichever one is closest to your budget, pick the one and I'll explain all the downgrades and upgrades over there. Thanks guys for watching. Adios.